I previously built this air powered bike as a fun project to test how feasible air powered vehicles may or may not be. It works by converting compressed air into rotational motion using a pneumatic cylinder and this machine crank setup. This then drives the chain to the rear wheel to push me along. And it worked quite well, but there were a few issues. For a start, the main crank axle uses an 8mm diameter shoulder bolt and the design required the M6 threaded section to be under load, which didn't survive half the rated pressure of the cylinder. I've since swapped this for a 10mm shoulder bolt and now the threaded part isn't under load, meaning the diameter of the thinnest section has effectively been doubled and should be able to withstand the full force of the cylinder at 100 psi of pressure. Also, for maximum efficiency, the valve timing must be optimised so the pressure inside of the cylinder is equal to atmospheric air when the exhaust valves open, as any excess pressure being released out of the exhaust is wasted energy that could be used to push the bike further. To do this, I either need to vary the valve timing depending on the input pressure, or regulate the input pressure and have fixed valve timing. After some consideration, I decided to go for the second option, as the input pressure looked difficult to measure whilst the bike was running. I made this cam and switch system on the crank to tell the electronics when to open the valves and it's optimised to run at about 35 to 40 psi. So let's see how far this thing really goes. So I've got the air tank at 100 psi and it's been regulated down to 40 psi for the cylinder. This should give me an exhaust pressure of roughly 15 psi, as close to atmospheric pressure as possible. Uh, so I'm hoping this will be a good range test. Leave a comment in the comment section down below how far you think this bike will go. I don't think it'll be too far, but that's what I'm here to test. All right, here we go. No pedaling. Off to a good start. So whilst I'm range testing the bike, and you're taking a guess as to how far to travel, let's run through some rough numbers. The tank on the rear of the bike has a capacity of 24 litres, and is filled to 100 psi gauge pressure. Gauge pressure means the measured pressure uses atmospheric pressure as a reference point. So at 100 psi gauge pressure, there is roughly 6.8 atmospheres of air that can be released from the tank which means the tank is storing the equivalent of 6.8 times its volume at atmospheric pressure, or 163.2 litres of atmospheric air. Each time the piston completes a full cycle, roughly 0.4 litres of volume is filled with air. Now the important part to note here is the exhaust pressure. If the air leaving the exhaust is at one atmosphere of pressure, each cycle will use 0.4 litres of the total 163.2 litres, giving a total of 408 cycles. But if the exhaust pressure is at two atmospheres, each cycle will use double the amount of air, effectively halving the range. One final thing to consider is the minimum pressure the bike can run at, as it still needs some force to push me along. I haven't tested the minimum pressure yet on flat ground with the new sprocket ratio, but let's set a minimum of say 1.5 atmospheres of pressure. Subtracting this from the estimated volume gives us a total of 127.2 litres of atmospheric air that can be released out the exhaust. Dividing this by 0.4 gives us a rough cycle count of 318. Now each cycle of the piston moves the bike a total distance of 2.15 metres. Therefore a very rough range estimation can be calculated as 684 metres. Yep. That is definitely the whole tank gone. About 18 psi. To measure the range, I watched back through the footage and counted how many cycles the piston completed and multiplied this by the distance travelled per cycle, giving a total range of 640.7 metres, which is quite a bit shorter than the estimated 684 metres. Not only that, but I wasn't applying power throughout the whole test, as I would coast for a bit before turning around.
which meant the cylinder actually completed a total of only 263 powered cycles, or 565.5 meters. This would either suggest that the exhaust pressure was slightly above atmospheric pressure, or the expanded volume of the cylinder is slightly larger than I estimated, as I have no way of accurately measuring it. Either way, the bike travelled 640 metres at probably walking pace. Let's see if it will go any faster. Right, so there's 100 psi in the tank, uh, but I've got the regulator fully open so that there's going to be 100 psi going straight into the cylinder. Uh, I'm not sure how fast this is going to go, but it's going to give me, hopefully, a lot of torque to the rear wheel. Um, the reason why I say I don't know how fast it will go is because there is a maximum flow rate of air in and out of the cylinder. Um, the actual inlet and exhaust holes in the cylinder are quite small. Um, but if I can get a lot of torque to the rear wheel, then uh, should be able to accelerate me pretty well. Right, first test on 100 psi. Fingers crossed it doesn't break. Oh yeah, there we go. That's got a lot of power. Oh, you can really hear that exhaust pressure though. <laughs> yeah, the exhaust pressure is so high when you run it at this pressure. I wonder how much the pressure's dropped just for that one run. The pressure's already down to 80 psi. Let's do that again. So it's now at 80 psi, it lost so much pressure in one run. Oh, it's lost me again. <laughs> After seeing this test at a higher pressure, you're probably itching for me to test a scuba tank to sustain this output for a longer period. But let's make a few predictions. At 100 psi supply pressure, each cycle uses roughly one litre of air at atmospheric pressure. I did some searching online and the largest scuba tank I could find was 20 litres and can be filled to 230 bar or 220 times atmospheric pressure. This gives a total of 4,540 litres of atmospheric air. Dividing this by the air required per cycle and multiplying this by the range travelled per cycle will give a range of about 9.5 kilometres, or 5.6 miles. Now this sounds pretty good, right? But that's not the full story, because a 20 litre tank rated for 230 bar doesn't read lightly on the scale, with an empty tank weight of 23 kilograms. Not only that, but the air stored inside at that pressure weighs roughly five and a half kilos alone, giving a total weight of 28.5 kilograms. So yeah, I'm not really in a rush to purchase one anytime soon. Yeah, it's a lot more fun with the high pressure, but like with every vehicle, the more power you output, the uh, less range you have. Oh. Before I end this video, I just want to make a quick comparison between this air-powered bike and my homemade electric bike. The air tank on the back of this air-powered bike weighs about 10.6 kilograms and gave me a range of 640 meters. Now, the battery pack, which is a small black box here on my electric bike, weighs just over three kilograms and gives me a range, when riding at about 10 miles an hour, gives me a range of 38 miles, which is almost 100 times the range of this air powered bike for one third of the weight. If I had a battery pack which weighed the same as the air tank on this air powered bike, then theoretically I'd be able to travel 120 miles at 10 miles per hour. So this air tank isn't going to be replacing my electric battery anytime soon. Also when comparing the battery pack to the largest scuba tank I could find, the scuba tank is almost 10 times the weight of the battery and only gives me about a seventh of the range of this battery. So I don't think air powered vehicles are going to be taking over uh, all of our other vehicles anytime soon. 
I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope this gave you some insight into how air powered vehicles probably need to advance beyond the laws of physics uh, to be useful. Uh, but I hope it was entertaining to you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and want to see more projects and experiments like this, then please click subscribe down below. A huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting my work and making these types of projects possible. And I'll see you in the next video. Also, I haven't spoken about the performance of an electric bike. So I know which one I'm going to be riding from now on.